Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. It is an afternoon from my end. This is Sunday afternoon, in fact, here in the city of Kigali, my favorite city in Africa. For now. <laughs> I'm in Kigali. Uh, I'm back here. It seems like I, this is going to be home for me. For some reason, and for very good reason, I am in love with this place. Obviously, as you may know, this is the cleanest city on the continent of Africa. Look it up. It's not coming from me. It's coming from statistics. Kigali is the cleanest city or the cleanest city on the uh, continent of Africa. This is uh, a very beautiful place to be today. And I'm in an area right now called Kisimenti. Kisimenti is a business area, a commercial area, I should say. Uh, this is where you find a lot of banking activities, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, international businesses ongoing here. Uh, this is a beautiful place to be today. I am in love with the country of Rwanda. I was here last year, December. And I could not wait to come back here and I'm here I am here in the city of Kigali I'm here in Rwanda my favorite place right now in Africa this place just gave me peace if you know anything about Rwanda you will know that Rwanda gives you peace it gives you peace Rwanda is just very peaceful very quiet very beautiful uh, people here just move about their daily activities just live their life so peacefully uh, it's also an affordable place to be very affordable place to be and I am just in love with Rwanda I cannot get uh, Rwanda off my head and yeah I hope you also like it I mean I hope you find time to uh, come out here to visit the, uh, the country of Rwanda and of course the beautiful city of Kigali. Uh, here, there are a lot of foreigners here, so you come here and you meet people from different areas. It's, it's a, Kigali is a city of diversity. It is really a city of diversity. There are a lot of people here from different parts of the world. Uh, a lot of students also out here. Uh, from West Africa, from uh, you know some other Eastern African country, and basically from everywhere, you find people here uh, from different parts of the world. They come here because the systems here work. The systems here work. Uh, you know, the year they have stable electricity, they have stable internet, uh, they have running waters. Uh, the rules and regulations here work. Uh, you know, the, the government passed the, passed the rules and you have to just obey, right? It works. Uh, transportation system works. Obviously, the bikes are the number one uh, transportation means of transportation here. Uh, so, if you want to get anywhere here, you must, you know, be prepared to get on a bike. Or here they call them the moto moto. Uh, my friend told me to say motari, motari, so you have to say motari. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you are getting anywhere in this uh, country, I mean, I mean in the city of Kigali, you must uh, get used to getting on a moto uh, to get you around and they are very affordable, at least for my uh, standard, I would say they are very affordable. You know, some other people may find them expensive to ride on but for me i think uh the motors are very very affordable um, so again i am just taking a little walk it's sunday not too much to it i'm doing nothing today i'm just relaxed and uh, i'm taking a little walk security in this country is tough notch okay everywhere you go 
you find security. You are safe, pretty much. You are secure. Nothing here to, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to make you afraid. Security is everywhere. It's tight. Uh, you find police on every street, protecting their citizens. You find citizens just moving about their business. You know, no one is uh, attacking you. No one is, you know, trying to steal from you. Uh, no one is, you know, trying to get get at you. Everyone just moving around their daily activities and their, you know, doing their daily, daily activities and just moving about. Uh, and that's one thing that I like about this place is that, you know, you feel very safe coming here or being here. You feel very, very safe. Uh, so this is the uh, city of Kigali. Now, let's talk about why is Rwanda doing so well in terms of everything, right? Now, economics wise, Rwanda is on top. Uh, security, Rwanda is on top. Rwanda, in fact, as a country, supply uh, United Nations with some of the most trained, some of the most well behaved, some of the most uh, well equipped uh, uh, UN mission securities. And it's a good thing to know that this country has done really well. I want to show you the uh, stadium. So this is where I was coming from. And you will see that the, uh, there's a new stadium being built, a sports stadium being built there. Very nice, very nice. So uh, the country is fast developing. The country is, you know, there is no corruption here. I know I'm just jumping from topic to topic because actually I don't have a topic. I'm just walking around. I just want to show you my uh, favorite city in Africa, you know, my, uh, yeah, the, the, the city that I have come to love. Now, see your drainage, okay? Look at a drainage in Africa. Look at a drainage. You see how clean the drainage is? See your drainage. Very, very clean. Now, I'm from Liberia, and I know most of you watching this are, will, you know, come from Liberia. Uh, and you know, one of the problems we have in Liberia is uh, the issue of flood, right? When it rain, a small rain can flood the entire city of Morovia. Just small rain. The entire city of Morovia is flooded when we have small rain, right? And I always argue that the reason we experience that level of flood is because of our drainage system. Now, some part of Morovia, you don't have any drainage at all. In other parts of Morovia, you find that the government is doing their best to build a drainage system. Uh, but also our citizens, man, the people themselves are the problem. I always say that the people are the problem. Do you see any trash in this drainage? Or what we call a gutter? Do you see any trash in here? Apart from the small leaves that are coming from the trees, right? You would never see any trash in here. You would never see any trash in here. Never will you see your trash in here. But go to central Morovia, go to the Rabat International Airport Highway, a very beautiful road that is being constructed, and the drainage is already filled with trash. The drainage is already filled with trash. I was just there a few days ago. The drainage in Morovia are filled with trash. But don't we expect that when it rains, the rain will flow through very easily. How can you expect rain to flow through very easily when your drainage systems are being filled with trash by the very people who have been asking for development? By the same people who are begging for development? So the problem is not only with our government. The problem is with the people, our mindset. The system don't work in Liberia. And in most parts of Africa, the system don't work. But here the system works. When the government says this should be done, it is going to get done. When the government says this is what we want and this is what we're going to get done, it's going to get done. 
but the good thing is the government here is in the interest of the people they are working in the interest of the people this is a place where you don't find a minister boasting of uh, overnight wealth you will never find a minister boasting of overnight wealth a government official would never post on Facebook flaunting with wealth you know traveling on private jets or first class and showing it off you will never find a city mayor here dressing in Gucci wearing Gucci bags wearing Gucci shoes and showing that off on social media you will never find a minister here not being productive but being kept in their role. That would never happen. Not in Rwanda. Not here. And that's why things work. That is why things are working here. This is a landlocked country, for God's sake. This is a landlocked country. This is a country that is not being... He developed his country by using the little resources that they have. But most importantly, he used leadership, strong leadership, to bring in the right people. The right people to do the work. And he showed that they are doing the work. Some people call him names. They say he's a dictator. He's this, he's that. If that's what dictatorship is, I want it. I want a man who loves his country so well that he will turn his back on what people think of him. But will focus on bringing development to his people bringing structure to his people, prioritizing his people, making sure his people are employed first. And that's another thing we should talk about. In most African countries, when people bring businesses or investments, so-called investments, when foreigners come, the foreigners would rather employ their own people than to, than to employ the local people. One of those countries is my country of Liberia. In Liberia, a Lebanese man can bring a store and hires mostly his own people and will leave out the ordinary Liberians. Maybe the only job he gives them security, cleaner, or other very small, little paying jobs. An investment company, or a mining company for instance, like the Western Cluster in Liberia, will come to Liberia to mine our minerals, and they will rather employ their own people than to employ Liberians try that nonsense here in Rwanda try here bring your store and hire your own people here come on come and try it bring a mining company and believe that you will hire your own people and leave the people of Rwanda out come and try it almost every stores you find here are owned by the local people their own people and if a foreigner managed to own one most of the employees you find in that stores are Rwandese period prioritize your own people so that the money can stay in your country your, your economy can grow just last week I saw the report let me share with you I saw the report, and I think yeah, the uh, second quarter report, so Q2 report, 
Rwanda economic grow 9.7% in Q2, quarter two of this year. Their economy grow 9.7%. Oh, I know many countries, man, like mine, Liberia, that instead of growth, we always see decline. We have to put in measures that work for us. But most importantly, we have to love our country. We have to love ourselves. No one, absolutely no one, will build your country more than you can build it yourself. Let me share another thing with you as I'm wrapping up this video. Politics is a, is a good thing, right? Politics is a good thing. Democracy is a good thing. But let me share with you. I'm in a country right now, Rwanda, that is going to election, presidential election, a few days. Few days, the country is going to election. There are three candidates in the race. Two opposition candidates, and the president, His Excellency Paul Kagame. Two guys going against President Kagame. The election is on July 15. Today, uh, let me pick up my phone because I'm not good with dates. But today is uh, June 30th. June 30th. And the elections are happening on July 15. If it was other country that I know, you will see campaign every single day in every single places. You know, people are insulting one another. People are being rude. People are being arrogant. People will be, you know, uh, 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 making all kinds of noise around in other countries that I know like my own country of Liberia where usually we have about 20 to 25 30 presidential candidates <laughs> and for representatives and senators race you find that uh, you know for one district for instance you find 40 people running for one seat Campaigns are everywhere. People are making noises everywhere, insulting, you know, one another everywhere, in the name of democracy. In the name of democracy. Today is June 30th. I'm in one of the most busiest part of the city of Kigali, the area called Kisimenti. I do not see any campaign. I do not see any candidates or their supporters on the street insulting one another. I do not see anyone here making track to one another. I see the country that is still moving forward, very calm, very peaceful, very quiet. People are just moving about their businesses and waiting for the elections to happen. On July 15, the people will go to the ballot and choose their president. And of course, we know the results already. <laughs> Our guy that we love so much will maintain his seat. The president, His Excellency Paul Kagame, will maintain his seat. Because he's doing the work. Don't listen to, the, to what the West will tell you. The West will tell you he controls everything. If this is what control is, a country that is fast developing, a country that was recently nothing, but now everyone wants to come to, then I love that control. Then I love that control. If that's why you call it. But it's beautiful. 
The man is working for his people. Things are working for the people of Rwanda. Other African countries have to learn. We have to learn. We have to learn from Rwanda. What are they doing that is making this country to move so fast? That every part of this country have running water, electricity, and road connection, and good Wi-Fi, good internet services. What are they doing? And you see what's happening here is that the people are doing so well that the other people on the other end are against them. The people are doing so well that the so-called big brothers and big sisters on the other side don't want them to. So they, they say a lot of things about him. I believe in good leadership. That's what I believe in. I believe that when a person is not doing well, you should remove them and put somebody that will do well. That's what I believe in. Well, good afternoon, good afternoon again. And welcome back to Let's Talk Rwanda. Let's Talk Rwanda, people. I am still here in my uh, favorite city, of Kigali here in the country of Rwanda. So let's keep talking Rwanda. Why is Rwanda developing so fast? Now today I'm actually in an area here where uh, the country of Rwanda is building one of the most, uh, I would say most beautiful, uh, very, very well equipped and well built uh, sports stadium here on the continent of Africa and i am here by the uh, stadium that is still on construction so uh you know rwanda as a country believes in uh sports uh mostly the uh do support uh basketball uh most of the folks here are really into basketball so uh but the uh the sport complex that is being built as you can see on the model that is being displayed uh will have a lot of different things here now they are building uh, not just sport complex, but they are also building like uh, uh, areas where when folks come here, they will be able to uh, stay. Now the construction is ongoing, so obviously I'm not going to go in there. But uh, this is uh, an addition to the already developed uh, Kigali. Uh, I heard, uh, and I'm going to give you the right figure, but the, uh, what I heard is that uh, the uh, sport complex will cost not less than the 165 uh, million United States dollars. So I am going to take you to the uh, sport complex that is still under construction. Like I said, I am not sure if uh, we will have camera access to the sport complex, but we will get close, very close, uh, and I will show you exactly what is unfolding there so let's talk rwanda now rwanda as you know i keep saying to you that this country is doing magic rwanda is doing magic why are other african countries not following the steps that rwanda has followed why a country like rwanda a landlocked country is doing so well doing so well with pretty much no resources, I should say, or very minimal resources. But other countries that have several natural resources are still falling behind. One of the major reasons is corruption, okay? Corruption, most African countries and most African leaders are very corrupt. And I'm not saying that the leaders in this country are not corrupt. But what we can see here, very obviously, is that the leaders here, even if they are corrupt, prioritize their country and their people. They put their country first and they put their people first. And that's why Rwanda, a landlocked small country that is sitting on many hills and mountains, is doing so well. 
is doing so well. The President, His Excellency Park Agami, ensures that his people and his country is prioritized. Unfortunately, very disappointing uh, that I was not able to recall the, uh, the new stadium that is being built here in Kigali. Uh, but from the video, you can see that there is a stadium uh, up here that is still under construction. Now, the main stadium, uh, I heard, was recently uh, inaugurated, so it has been open to the public for use. Uh, it is a beautiful stadium. The, uh, I'm going to show you some pictures and videos that have been captured by other people because I was unable to capture the front, the front of the stadium. A $165 million Minga Stadium was built here or has been built here in Kigali uh, to facilitate different, different type of sports, including soccer, basketball, volleyball, and everything. Uh, so that's the compound of the stadium, and that's the stadium behind there. But uh, I, did, I took a little route on the front of the stadium, but I was unable to capture the uh, front of the stadium. Uh, I took that route, but uh, you know, in, here in Rwanda, security is uh, a major thing here. So to do any sort of recording uh, in a public space like the, uh, like the stadium, you must seek approval from the security. So when I went there, I asked the security if I could record, and I was told no. And when the security in this country tell you no, please understand that it is no. You cannot do anything outside of what they told you. So uh, I could not do anything and I was able to just leave it alone. Uh, but it's a beautiful stadium that, you know, I would love to come one day and just enjoy some sporting activities from, from within. Uh, but for now, let's keep uh, talking about Rwanda and uh, let's see other parts of uh, Kigali and uh, the, the country of Rwanda. So keep following us as we uh, continue to show you the beautiful city of Kigali and the country Rwanda. Thank you. My little baby got eyes on me My little baby got eyes on me 